Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar. My name is Swapnil Chaurasia, and I'm today's facilitator. I'm a master student at the University of Tokyo. So today's webinar is about study and work in Japan. Study and work in Japan aims to promote education in Japan by motivating young students to choose Japan as a preferred destination for future studies. A series of webinars is being organized under this program in which we'll have presentations by experts from different universities across Japan. So Japan, even after being the third largest economy with the highest employment rate among the G7 nations with a huge demand of skilled personnel, is currently not a very popular country for higher education. This is mainly due to lack of information and various misconceptions like Japanese language requirements, living cost, lifestyle, job prospects, etc. So during this webinar, most of these questions will be answered. And if you have further questions, please write them down in the Q&A portal and we will answer uh, most of them. So I would request also the presenters to please keep your mic and camera off when you're not presenting. So finally, today's webinar is scheduled for two hours and we will have uh, first the introduction session by Mr. Mia Uchi, director of the University of Tokyo India office, followed by the presentation on overview of study and, Japan, study and work in Japan by Ms. Megumi Paul. We will then have presentations by the representatives of Kyoto University, Shimano University and Kyushu University, as you can see in the agenda slide I have shared. So total presentation time for each university is 20 minutes and that will be followed by 10 minutes of Q&A session. So without any further delay, I would like to invite Mr. Mia Uchi, Director of the University of Tokyo India office to share his thoughts on today's session. Thank you, Spanier. And uh, uh, dear student and parent in seven country, in India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, Lanka and Mordiv. My name is Yasuki Miyauchi, the director of the University of Tokyo in the office. Today, I'm very pleased to uh, uh, introduce our session, the study and work in Japan. This program is sponsored by NEX, Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology in Japan. The mission of this webinar the introduction of Japanese universities and assist you to study and work in Japan. This project consists of 12 sessions. It already started from end of October and February next year. So total 30 universities would like to introduce you from various districts of Japan, Tokyo, Kyoto, southern part of Japan as well. National universities, public universities, and private universities, both graduate and undergraduate schools. Therefore, if you participate many sessions, you'll be familiar with Japanese university today. Yeah, of course, 20 minutes presentation is not enough. Therefore, if you're interested in uh, some universities, please don't hesitate to contact them directly. I am sure they will give you enough answer to you. So please use this session as a starting point of your uh, career in Japan. I hope this program will help you. And it is my great pleasure if you consider some Japanese universities as your future option. Anyhow, please enjoy today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Miyauchi, for your valuable insights and uh, sharing the vision of uh, this program. I'm sure many students will be motivated uh, to apply for Japanese universities. So next, we have Ms. Megumi Paul, Managing Director at Focal Ed, to guide the students on the study and work in Japan. So I would like to invite Ms. Megumi Paul, please. Thank you, Mr. Swapnil. Hello, everyone. 
I was born in India, moved to Japan in 1997, and became a Japanese citizen. Thanks for joining today's webinar. It gives me great pleasure to present to you all today. I will share my screen now. I will briefly explain why Japan is the rising magnet for foreign talent for higher education and work. The national flag of Japan is officially named as Nishoki, meaning sun mark flag. Main religions are Shintoism, Buddhism, and Christianity. Japan has 47 prefectures, equivalent to states in India. Japan has the second largest population of 125 million among G7 industrialized nation next to United States of America. As you know, G7 countries are Japan, US, Germany, UK, France, Italy, and Canada. Japan's economy is the third largest in the world and is on the move again, brimming with opportunities for foreign professionals to work hand in hand with top Japanese talent. Japan's economy is mainly driven by automotive, consumer electronic industries, robotics, and animation industries. Japan provides a comfortable living environment for students. Firstly, Japan is a safe place to live with low crime rate. It has an excellent public transportation system with subways and bullet trains. I have to mention about the well-established national health insurance system. 70% of the medical bill is paid by the government and only 30% of the medical expenses is paid by the student. After the student joins the college, the student will be given the National Health Insurance Card. The student has to pay an annual premium of rupees 12,000 only, which is reasonable. To your right, you see Tokyo ranked first in World Safest Cities ranking in 2019 by Economist Intelligence Unit. There are 90 undergraduate English courses offered by 40 Japanese universities and 160 postgraduate English courses offered by 51 Japanese universities. All undergraduate degree programs are for four years and graduate degree programs are for one to two years and three-year PhD program. There are three different categories of universities in Japan, national, public, and private. National universities was founded by Japanese government and contributes to the development of higher education and research. Public universities are established by prefectures and play an important role in providing higher education. 80% of the universities are private and provides unique education and research based on the spiritual legacy of the founders. I will share the differences of, between Japanese and Indian higher education. The Indian education is focused on theoretical studies, whereas Japanese education focus on the basic knowledge of a specific field of major. Japanese education provides an opportunity to understand various diverse foreign cultures, society, and nature, whereas Indian education focuses on growing global trends. Also, Japanese education gives importance to develop communication skills logical thinking, problem solving, and apply these skills to solve new issues. Japanese universities offer world-class facilities with cutting edge technology, ideal for educational research and international activities. They provide sophisticated libraries with excellent workspace for self-study, group discussions, co-curricular activities for teamwork. Dormitories provide students a peaceful atmosphere for a well-balanced academic and personal lifestyle. Here we will compare the tuition fees and living expenses of US and Japan and about scholarships. Tuition fees in Japanese public universities is rupees four lakhs per year versus rupees 22 lakhs in US public universities. Tuition fees in Japanese private universities is rupees 12 lakhs per year versus rupees 37 lakhs per year in US private universities. 
Japanese college tuition fees is one third of US college tuition fees. Living expenses in Japan and US is almost the same. Japanese universities offer merit-based and need-based scholarships. Unlike USA, no visa issues in Japan for both student visa and for employment visa after graduation in Japan. Average salary for undergraduate students after graduation is around rupees 28 lakhs per year. Japan has the lowest unemployment rate of 2.34% based on 2020 statistics and likely to continue due to growing population, which provides a great opportunity for international students like you to study, work and settle in Japan. Why we have so many job opportunities in Japan? Japan is the third largest economy in the world and the only developed nation in Asia with highest per capita income. It has the lowest unemployment rate of 2.5% in the developed G7 countries. There are a number of global Japanese companies like Toyota, Panasonic, Mitsubishi that are leading the change. Uniqlo has opened its outlet in India, showing that Japan is moving to retailing industry also. All global companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon have big operations in Japan due to Japan market size. After graduation, you will get a placement in Japan in Japanese companies as well as multinational companies like Apple, Accenture, Deloitte, Google. Also, you can work in India or any part of the world in Japanese companies as they welcome students who have graduated from Japanese universities. Japan's culture is incredibly rich. The food is insanely delicious with various international cuisine options like Indian, Mexican, Italian, French. Everyone is so polite. Transportation is always on time. Japan is a place where ancient temples and world heritage sites coexist with modern cityscapes and state-of-the-art technology. There are four seasons to experience and enjoy in Japan. The average temperature in Tokyo during winter is 10 degrees Celsius, spring 23 degrees Celsius, summer 30 degrees Celsius, autumn 22 degrees Celsius. Thank you. So with that, I will pass on to Mr. Swapnil to start introducing the distinguished speakers from the prestigious Japanese universities to proceed with their presentations. Thank you very much, Ms. Megumi. Uh, it was a great overview and it showed the overall picture, not only about the education, but also about the job prospects in Japan. So as we all know that studying abroad can be a big financial investment and thus knowing about the future career opportunities is very important. Thank you, Ms. Megumi for shedding light in all these aspects. So our first presentation, uh, so first I will share uh, the, uh, the agenda again so that you can see the flow. So first presentation is by Kyoto University. Kyoto University has generated five prime ministers of Japan to date and is also framed for producing world-class researchers, including many Nobel laureates. So from Kyoto University, we are joined by Ms. Kawano Mako, uh, who will be presenting from Kyoto University. Uh, she is the senior international education administrator at the Kyoto University. So I request Ms. Kawano Mako to please take over the proceedings. So thank you very much for your detailed introduction. Uh, can you see the slide all right? Yes, yes. Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, thank you for your interest in Kyoto University and attending the, our presentation. I'm Mako Kawano from the Admissions Assistance Office of Kyoto University. It's my pleasure to have this opportunity to talk to you today. Let me start with the university overview. Kyoto University was established in 1897 as the second oldest national university in Japan. Since then, the university has a policy and a strong atmosphere of academic freedom. And that is what makes us a top leading research university in Japan. But our reputation is not limited within the country. 
Kyoto University is highly ranked in various global rankings. We are ranked 33rd on QS and 54th on Times Higher Education. Also, our researchers were awarded 11 Nobel Prize to this day. And in fact, 11 Nobel Prize is the largest number among Asian universities at the moment. In addition to Nobel Prize, we have two Field Medal Laureate and one Gauss Medal Laureate. Field Medal and Gauss Medal Prize, these are regarded as one of the highest honors a mathematician can receive. And it shows that Kyoto University students have opportunities to learn directly from the world's top level researchers. So this is a map of Japan. And the university has three campuses across broader Kyoto city area. In addition, there are 44 off-campus research and educational facilities within Japan and 61 abroad. Our students will have access to utilize these facilities for their study. Kyoto University currently has over 20,000 students, including around 3,000 international students from around 200 countries and regions. Our domestic students also come from every corner of Japan. So it's a good place to expand your future network. Next, I'd like to talk about the Kyoto city where the campus is located. So these are the pictures taken in Kyoto in spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Kyoto is the ancient capital city, which remains as the cultural heart of the country. And nearly 7.5 million tourists visit Kyoto from outside of Japan every year. It has famous traditional festivals all year round, and there are 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in Kyoto. You can feel the beauty of the country everywhere in the city. But Kyoto is not only about historical sites and the traditional culture, but also it is a modern city with many global companies such as Nintendo, if you know, a famous game company. Also, the city has good places for shopping and to eat out, so you can enjoy both Japanese traditional culture and the modern aspect in the city. Kyoto is also a student-friendly city. There are over 30 universities and around 10% of the population is actually college students. So there is everything that the students need. Next, I would like to talk about what you can study at the Kyoto University. First of all, uh, this is a basic education system and the standard duration of each level of the study. So bachelor four years and master two years, doctoral program three years. And also we have a, a five year doctoral program, it's, which combines the master's and doctor's programs. In Kyoto University, we offer a wide range of study areas and 10 undergraduate and 18 graduate schools. But in most programs, Japanese is used as the basic language. Therefore, international applicants are required to have sufficient proficiency in Japanese to get into those programs. But having said that, we also have English medium programs where students can study entirely in English. Today, I would like to introduce these programs to you and explain about how to find each program information for details. I might share you the website links to the chat message. So please pay attention for the chat as well. First, I will talk about undergraduate programs. The only program we have entirely in English is civil engineering at undergraduate level. This is a four year program leading to a bachelor of engineering. The program aims students to learn to design and manage civil infrastructures, 
while considering the global environmental issues in urban and regional areas, particularly in Asian and African countries. The program starts in April, and the application period is from late August to early October, usually. So for details, please visit the website, program website. I'm looking for the chat box, here it is. Okay, here it is. And then I'd like to introduce this unique program, Kyoto University International Undergraduate Program, or Kyoto IAP. This is a four and a half year program which enables students to learn Japanese language and obtain the bachelor degree at the undergraduate school of your choice. As Japanese training will be provided through the program, no Japanese language ability is required to begin with. In the first six months, students take intensive Japanese language training and some pre foundation classes in English. Then, you will enroll in one of the 10 undergraduate schools that I showed before. So during the first and the second year, you will study mainly in English while continuing Japanese language classes. When you get into your third and fourth year, you will be able to study your major subject in Japanese for a bachelor's degree. Students under this program will receive a full scholarship and there is no application fee for this program only. So this is a very special program and we aim to have all top level students from all over the world in this program. The program begins in October and the application period is around November to December. Okay. I share the website of this too. Next about the graduate programs. For graduate studies, various study areas are available in English from social sciences to engineering and bio studies. The application requirement and enrollment timeline vary depending on the program. For instance, some programs begin in April, some in October and some in both April and October. So for details, again, please visit the program website. Oops. I missed the chat box again here. Here it is. And for the admission information, please visit this website. And for the most of graduate programs, you have to go through the preliminary review supported by the admissions assistance office. We call it an AAO application process. This is not a screening, more like confirm your eligibility and to connect you to a potential supervisor before you actually apply for the graduate school of your, of your interest. So AAO staff will support you to prepare appropriate document to be reviewed by the graduate school or your potential supervisor. And for some graduate programs, you might have to come to Japan to take the entrance exam. But actually, many international students take the way to enroll the university as a research student first. Research student is a non-degree seeking status, and it enables you to prepare for the entrance exam under the supervisor's guidance on campus, and then take the exam and go on to a degree program. We also offer three joint or double degree programs for graduate studies. The double master degree program in management with Cornell University, the joint PhD program in genomic medicine with Maguire University, 
and the joint master degree program in transcultural studies with Heidelberg University in Germany. These programs are offered entirely in English and provide the student with unique opportunities for studies of great value that would not be available from a single university. So again, for the details, please visit the website. Next, I will talk about the financial matters, including scholarships and the living cost. Since Kyoto University is a national university, tuition fees are relatively reasonable and around 5,000 US dollars per year. There is a one time only admissions fee of around 3,000 US dollars for the first year, and this is quite common for all Japanese universities. There is no difference in fees between international students and the local students to study at Kyoto University. A wide variety of scholarships are available for international students. And the first is this Japanese government scholarship known as a NEXT scholarship. You will receive over 1,000 US dollars per year, per month. And the scholarship covers application fee, admission fee, and the tuition fees, as well as one round trip flight ticket between your home country and Japan. And there are two schemes for the mixed scholarships. But most of the mixed scholarship students at Kyoto University receive it through the embassy recommendation scheme. And in order to apply through the embassy recommendation, you must submit your applications to the Japanese embassy or consulate in your home country. So for the application information, please visit the Japanese embassy website. And to apply for a university recommendation, you need to contact your potential supervisor or the graduate school. And for most of our graduate schools, you will first need to pass the entrance exam or they will screen for this scholarship through the entrance exam. And second one is just a scholarship. It provides about 450 US dollars per month. The applications are accepted after enrollment through the graduate school. And then scholarships by private foundations, which you can apply also after enrollment. Kyoto University annually selects and nominates candidates for around 60 foundations. Each foundation typically selects one or two students and provides around 300 to 1,600 US dollars per month. And lastly, an Asian Future Leadership Scholarship Program. This is a full scholarship for master programs. And only students from designated institutions are eligible to apply. So applicants need to pass the university entrance exam in addition to proceeding the application for this scholarship. So for more details, please visit the website. And average living cost in Kyoto is allowed 800 US dollars per month. Of course, it could be higher or cheaper depending on your lifestyle. But in general, it is quite reasonable as for the size of the city, we think. And we have seven dorms available for our international students. If you live in one of them, the monthly rent fees will be from around 115 to 350 US dollars for a single type rooms. International students are allowed to do part-time jobs up to 28 hours per week during school days and eight hours per day during long holidays with applying for a work permit beforehand. 
So there are special support available, especially for international students on campus, such as supplemental Japanese language lessons are available with free of charge. And the student tutor system in which your seniors give support in your academic and daily life. There are several advisory services available. All are confidential and the student can feel free to stop by for the consultations. And this student lounge, Kizuna, is the place where you can get together and enjoy exchange activities with Japanese students and international students from around the world. So this is the end of my presentation. I hope you could find any information useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us by email at this address. So I look forward to seeing you on our campus in the near future. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Kavano. And uh, it was a very comprehensive presentation covering so many aspects of students from education to financial, from uh, daily life uh, to the future. So that was indeed a very comprehensive presentation. So now I would like to pick up some questions from uh, the Q&A portal, uh, which I guess uh, you would like to answer. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is one question. Uh, so may I know the opportunities for PhD and postdoc engineering programs available in Kyoto University? I would, uh, I also like to know about it, uh, like in the full-time program, any scholarships available, so. A PhD and the postdoc program. Uh, what, yes. what ratio means, ratio between the undergraduate student and graduate student, or what ratio is he asking about? I don't think there is any question about the ratio. I might, I might have percentage? misspoken. Uh, percentage of scholarship receivers. Uh, is it, uh, so based the approach, how many, uh, can you answer like how many PhD and postdoc engineering programs are available in general? As a number of students for the doctoral program and the postdoc. Yes. Well, it's a quite big university. So I don't really yes. remember the number of PhD and postdoc to research as exactly, uh, well, but uh, I can say like uh, it is all full-time program usually, all full-time programs. And the PhD is a kind of a student and the postdoc is a researcher position. Yes. So it's quite different. Mm, but, um, since we are quite a research intensive university, uh, the number of PhD and postdoc students are relatively large, larger than the other universities, I would say. Okay. So I think that- And the scholarships be... available. Uh, the scholarships I just, I, I think explained. Yes. Enough, uh, I hope. Yes. Um, and uh, there are some more questions. Uh, if you would like to pick up the question by yourself, you can also do that in the Q&A portal. Uh, so if you can open the Q&A portal at the okay. bottom. And uh, all right. if you there is no age limit. Uh, yes. Okay. And uh, food technology, not exactly, but you might be interested in looking at the Graduate School of Agriculture. Thank you. And uh, is mathematics compulsory at school level to learn biology? I think so. <laughs> uh, that is uh, quite different mm. from Indian education system. That's why oh. this question, I guess, came because in Indian education oh. system for biology, learning biology, we don't require mathematics as a, a compulsory subject. I see. Well, but because the, our biology program is uh, not available in English. If you are interested in learning biology at undergraduate level, you have to apply for the IAP, the International Undergraduate Program that I explained. So yes. please check the um, criteria, application criteria for the IAP. If they require mathematics, you need. But because we, uh, the IAP provides the foundation program, I mean. So they might, uh, I think they cover some mathematics course there. So please confirm, you know, 
with the IAP website uh, if you really require the mathematics before applying for the program. Thank you very much. Because I think it's, I'm taking the time a lot. Is that okay? Uh, I think we still have a few minutes of our Q&A okay. portion, so. Okay, probably. Uh, uh, one of this two, is- Two, uh, three more questions. Yes. Um, do, you uh, have... do you have economics? Yes, 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 yes. And in the line, you have to have to take a machine too. Vocational schools to study courses. Ah, uh, okay. Well, which is not actually, uh, we don't really cover that area, but I think other universities in Japan offer such programs. So I recommend you to visit maybe just the website and look for that specific program. And uh, Fine art, applied art, it's also quite depends on. I know a professor like who cover that area, but it could be undergraduate school of letters or graduate school of engineering with some like digital technology. So it really depends on. So I would suggest you to visit our researcher database and you know, search with some keywords that you are actually looking for. So that I would like to add that uh, the links that you have shared, I would request all the attendees to please save the links as uh, after the webinars, they cannot uh, as, uh, access the links. And most of these questions, they can uh, get their answered in the, uh, in the links that you have yes. shared. So thank yes, you very much for sharing the links. Uh, so if you have any question that you specifically would like to answer, you can choose one or two more. Well, uh, I think most of the questions probably um, if you visit the specific website, you will find the information. So that is yes. the answer link each questions yes. now uh, please visit the website and if you cannot find the information please email us i think that will be faster uh, yes uh, so i guess uh, thank you very much miss kavanu for uh, answering the so many questions and being so proactive in helping students so uh, next uh, sh uh, we should move ahead with the flow of the webinar so i will again share the agenda slide so next uh, presentation is by shimani university so uh, uh, Shimane University is uh, one of the top national universities in Japan. It is a multidisciplinary university, which was the first year public university in Japan to establish an interdisciplinary department integrating natural sciences and engineering. So from Shimane University, we are joined by Ms. Catherine Sam uh, Simpson from the Center of International Exchange so I would like to invite Ms. Catherine Simpson to please take over the proceedings. Thank you very much for the introduction. Please allow me to share my screen. Uh, is the screen showing up all right? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I would like to now uh, introduce Shimani University, which is a national university. As one of our speakers said earlier, uh, there are three different types of universities, public, private, and national universities. Shimani University is a national university and such, the tuition fees can be a bit lower than say um, other universities. So Shimani University first, where is it? So if you took a flight from Tokyo, it's about one and a half hours. It's the pink region on the map and we have about four and a half hours from Osaka area uh, by train and uh, bullet train. So, and Shimane is filled with nature. We have Matsue Castle, which is a national treasure. One of the very few remaining original castles left in Japan. Uh, the tea culture is very strong here in Matsue for green tea and then uh, Japanese sweets that go along with them. There's also the very famous Izumo Grand type Izumo Taisha Grand Shrine, which is also a national treasure. All the gods gather there in October. 
Um, and we also have the UNO, UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, Iwami Ginzan Silver Mines, which um, if anyone knows the film Francis Mononoke, um, it's kind of like that where you have you used to have a lot of iron towns in Shimane because you were able to um, mine a lot of minerals from the hills here. Matsai is a good environment for study. Uh, it has a very um, not too not too varied climate. So there are about 20, 200,000 people who live in Shimane Prefecture um, or in just in Matsai, excuse me, in Matsai City. Uh, the climate in January is about 4.2 degrees, and in August, it's about 26.3 degrees. In uh, Matsue, which is the capital of Shimane Prefecture, which are kind of like states, uh, there are many festivals. So we have festivals that run through the streets. We have festivals that go on the, we light lanterns and let them out on the lake or in rivers. And obviously we have um, amazing, amazing fireworks festivals as well, as you can see by this photo. So now I'd like to talk about Shimane University for a little bit. Uh, we have Matsue campus and Izumo campuses. So two campuses. One uh, Matsue campus is in the sort of green area. And then you have Izumo campus is this orange one right here. Izumo campus is our medical campus. Um, and Matsue campus has the rest of our, um, we have six faculties and uh, the main five are at Matsue campus and then the me medical school science, uh, medical school is at Izumo campus. So just a little bit about the research that we have going on in Shimane University. We have a lot of research rooted in the local community. So research about infrastructure on the local community has been built on the San Yin region and the historical changes that have happened here. So, so the San Yin region is like I showed you on that map before, the pink area is uh, Shimane, uh, Shimane Prefecture. And it also includes Totori Prefecture, which is the neighboring sort of north, northern prefecture up the coast. We also have preventative studies for critical diseases and elderly using a, a cohort research platform. So as you may know, there's a growing number of elderly people in uh, the world, but also especially Japan is, has a problem with this. Um, so there's research to preventative studies uh, currently going on at Shimane University. We also have the Shimane Green and Life Nanomaterials Project. Um, a lot of engineering goes into these projects here. And the last would be Earth and uh, Geo Environmental Science Project, where we study on the earth science, earth resource science, and geo environmental technology. So, first, I'm going to uh, just go through the faculties that we have at Shimane University. We have the Faculty of Law and Literature, Faculty of Human Science. Um, everything in red are graduate schools. Um, so the Faculty of Education, Inter Interdisciplinary Faculty of Science and Engineering, Faculty of Life and Environmental Science, and the Faculty of Medicine. And our graduate schools are the Graduate School of Human Sciences, the Graduate School of Education, the one of Natural, Natural Science and Technology, and the Graduate School of Medical Research. So the one here I'm going to point out is um, the Graduate School of Nat natural science and technology is one of the ones we'll, we're going to be talking about a bit later because it is one of the graduate facilities in which you can uh, learn in English. So again, um, just going over the last information, the first three uh, or the faculties that are open to international students, um, you have to take the EJU and this would be all in Japanese would be the Faculty of Law and Literature, Interdisciplinary Faculty of Science and Engineering, Faculty of Life and Environmental Science. And then you also have um, masters, this masters, the Graduate School of Human Sciences is in uh, Japanese, but the next one, general, the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology is in uh, English. Then you have uh, the Graduate School of Medical Research, Masters and Doctorate, 
Uh, those are both in English as well at the Izumon campus. So if you were to enroll in Japanese, um, which we re recommend uh, for the EJU, if anyone knows the Japanese language proficiency test, um, we would recommend that in taking the EJU that you at least have an N3 level of understanding, if not N2. N2 would be preferred and would make your life a lot easier. <laughs> Um, but here we have uh, just some of the details of what you can actually study here. Uh, as an undergraduate student, you have law and economics, sociocultural socio studies, language and culture. And then in the interdisciplinary faculty of science and engineering, there's physics and material science, chemistry, earth science, mathematics, information systems, design and data science, mechanical, electrical and electronic engineering and architect architectural design. Also, we have life sciences, agricultural and forest sciences, environmental and sustainability sciences. You may be wondering, uh, what, what do you do if you want to enroll in Shimano University and you do not speak Japanese? Well, the Interdisciplinary Faculty of Science and Engineering has an English and Japanese bilingual education course specifically tailored for international students. So the first, the point of the program is that you start in English or with a little bit of Japanese and English in your first and second years. And as you move on into your third and fourth years, all of your research and all of your classes would be in Japanese. Uh, so the, the departments here we have, you would get a Bachelor of Science and Engineering, Physics and Material Science, Chemistry, Earth Science, Mathematics, Information Systems, Design, and Data Science, Mechanical, electro Electrical, and Electronic Engineering, and Architecture Design. So for this bilingual course, we recommend that you have, uh, it's required that you have at least a Japanese language proficiency test of N4 or higher. So N4 is basically that you know hiragana, katakana, and some kanji, um, and that you know basic grammar. So the N4 test is not very difficult. Um, in English, we have TOEFL requirements, requirements as well, if English is not your native language. So uh, another, if you cannot speak Japanese, but would still like to study at Shimano University, a lot, a lot of our students uh, enter into the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology. So you have science and engineering, science and environmental systems, and agricultural and life sciences. Um, and these all come with very similar um, fields of study that are attached to them. Um, and this is a very uh, popular program among our international students who do not speak Japanese. So just a little information on the students at um, Shimano University. We have 220, as of May 1st, two, 2020, we have 220 international students from 30 different countries, most of them coming from Asia. And here we have um, by statistics, what, how many uh, students come from what countries. So uh, first of all, of China, we have 96 students. From Bangladesh, we have 46. Korea, 20. Malaysia, 16. Indonesia, 8. Vietnam, 8. Um, the reason why we have so many Bangladeshi students is because uh, Shimani University has created an atmosphere for <clears throat> the community to really become, to really flourish here. So there are many uh, Bangladeshi residents in Shimane. Um, particularly near the university in Matsue and in Izumo campus as well. Um, the campus also offers halal food in the dining hall. So if you're a Muslim and you need halal food, then you're set at the dining hall. And also um, in directly in front of the campus, Matsue campus is a mosque. So many students find this a very um, comfortable and easy going place to live. International students. Um, so this is a, a little bit of a breakdown of how many international students that we have and where they're studying or what they're studying. 
So undergraduates, we have about 71. In law and literature, we have 16. Science and engineering, 31. Life and environmental science, 24. And then our graduate student population is a little bit larger with 46, uh, with, sorry, uh, 93 people, students, and um, 46 at the medical school. We also have research students at Sumani University. It includes, um, it, and this number here of 33 includes 20 exchange students. We also have the United Graduate School. So when I was talking about San In, the area with Totori Prefecture and Shimane Prefecture, there are 16 students that we have uh, that we share in tandem and uh, between these two universities. So I know you all are wondering about scholarships. Um, I think Kyoto University, the representative from Kyoto University did a very good job <clears throat> talking about scholarships. Uh, the Japanese, first you have the MEXT scholarship um, which would be the Japanese government scholarship here on top. And then you have the JASO scholarship. So these two are government related scholarships. Um, the rest of them here, we just wrote a couple, uh, but there are very, there's a wide range of scholarships that you can apply for. This SIC stands for Shimane International Center uh, Scholarship. And it's a center that supports student life as well as student learning. Uh, Furukawa Scholarship, the Rotary Scholarship, and other scholarships that you can apply for after you come to Shimane University. So uh, in Shimane, the case of Shimane University, uh, these top two MEX scholarships that um, here, the Honor Scholarship, um, this first one you would get before you come, in this MEX scholarship you get before you come to Shimane University. Um, we do not do embassy um, referrals. You have to get, you have to go to the embassy yourself, gain the scholarship, and then come to the university. And the honor scholarship is also um, based on merit, your academic merit. So that's when the, uh, a scholarship you would apply for after you arrive in Japan. There's also 12 students here getting scholarships from their own universities, or their own countries rather. And then there are 15 students with private scholarships and then 166 students who um, are paying their own way through university. So uh, I think, I believe this is very close to Kyoto University's numbers, but the admission is about, um, let's say uh, two, uh, $2,000 or so in US dollars and about uh, $4,000 in US dollars. Uh, sorry, the admission is around uh, 2000 to 2500 and the tuition would be around uh, four or five dollars $5, in US dollars. Um, but we do uh, take into account your financial situation and so some of the students get half exemption or full exemption of their tuition fees. And especially this year with COVID-19, that was something the university was very determined to do to help students get through these really difficult times. So 84 students are, are receiving either full or half exemption of their tuition fees. So this is just some data to show you how at the bottom 2016, um, we didn't have very many applicant, international applicants, but as you see now, the numbers have um, nearly doubled. Uh, same with the ones that actually enter, meaning enroll into the university. We also have, this is a quick uh, breakdown. You don't need to read it all, but it's a breakdown of the students studying in different courses. And these again are the Japanese these courses are the courses you can enroll in in Japanese um, after, after taking the EJU. So uh, dormitory life, what is it like? So for the international house, we have the international house for our exchange students um, at the Matsei campus, there are 26 rooms. And then we have some at the Izumo campus as well. Most of the students um, would like to go into the dormitories 
So some have a shared kitchen and bath and some do not. And depending on that, the prices are a little bit different. So you have um, maybe about 200 US dollars a month or 40 US dollars a month or 160 US dollars a month. Um, <clears throat> so these are some statistics about how the university dormitory is set up. The university dormitory houses 80 students in public housing. Uh, there's prefectural housing where 20 student, 22 students currently live. And then a lot of students prefer to have their own private apartment, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And other is staying with family or friends or staying in, um, uh, a, in a shared living situation. This is the, what the dormitory looks like for the international house. Um, it's about a five to 10 minute walk from campus, so very close. And this one is a little bit further of a walk, maybe 10 minutes, um, but it, it's the dormitory open to all students and it's been um, newly refurbished a couple of years ago. So very nice looking. Um, most students live around the university with, within 15 minutes on foot or by bicycle. So here um, is this shared type of living that I was talking about. It's kind of like living in a dormitory situation, but in apartment. Um, you pay probably about 150 US dollars. Um, and for the, to have your own room would be uh, 25, uh, 250 US dollars about. Um, we have a tutoring system that will help, you're set up with a Japanese uh, tutor and uh, they will help you with daily life and study support. And there's also uh, tutors in the International House Dormitory. We also have Japanese language supplementary lectures for elementary and immediate cl intermediate classes, as well as JLPT classes. Um, there's uh, lots of volunteer support by in the student dormitories and through the Shimani Inter International Center. We also have field trips for you to get to know the international students better and to get to know the Japanese students who study at Shimani University better. One is a ski tour at a close mountain in Totori Prefecture called Mount Daisen. And the other one is a small town uh, in Shimani Prefecture called Onan. So everyone's dressed up in traditional garb uh, from a traditional dance called, uh, performance art called Kagura. As uh, was said before by a previous speaker um, and medical support, if you come to Japan, you're required to get national health insurance, but then that means you only pay 30% of all medical costs. It's a very good system here. We also have um, in, uh, we also have support for international students in finding a part-time job. Again, like was said before by Kyoto University, uh, you can work for 28 hours um, and then in times of like winter break or such you can work up to 40 hours eight hours a day with special permission uh, medical services traffic accidents garbage trouble uh, tends to be a problem as well but all of these we have different types of support mechanisms so i want to say uh, thank you very much for listening to this presentation if you want to take a screenshot of this, this is uh, this first QR code is all in Japanese because it's for undergraduates. Um, the graduate school here, this English one, I'll move my mouse, and then um, the Japanese graduate school. So, and uh, if you'd like as well, uh, here's another, you can watch uh, some videos about Shimani University on our YouTube uh, account. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Catherine, for your wonderful presentation covering so many different aspects of students' life. And I'm hope, uh, I hope that uh, many students will be motivated to come to uh, Shimano University after listening to your presentation. So uh, now we have some questions and uh, that uh, if you would like to answer, you can uh, pick them up from the Q&A portals. Or if you'd like, I can uh, ask some of the questions. Um, let's see. 
For Shimani University, what are the details of the life and science course? Is there a biology specific course? Is mathematics required for a subject applying to life and science course? Is an SAT score available instead of EJU? Will a preference be given to a candidate either with N1, with uh, N1 JLPT level? Um, those are a lot of questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, life and uh, life science course is about um, more in the sort of microbiology-ish range um, and biology itself as well. Um, there's not a biology specific course. It depends on where, whether you're trying to study for undergraduate or graduate. Um, uh, these courses again, like uh, would be in Japanese only. So uh, mathematics, is it required for life and science? Uh, that I'm not sure about. Um, I do not, well, I, I don't know is my answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, is an SAT score acceptable instead of EJU? No, for Shimani University, you must have EJU to be able to um, enter into the undergraduate system. And will preference be given to in candidates with N1 level? Um, not necessarily preference, but it depends on your EJU score um, plus your um, other paperwork that you turn in. But uh, not necessarily preference, but it makes your life a lot easier if you have N1 and if you have that certificate N1 as well, um, but you don't need it. Um, same with any of the other N levels. You don't need the certificate, but it makes your life a lot easier. Um, can I apply on research projects? Is there any opportunity for students to get funding from professor for PhD in Sumani University? So um, our doctorate programs, you'd have to contact the professors directly. Um, I'll put my email in the chat box afterward if you guys have specific questions, if you are looking for a professor, but it depends on if the professor has time for you. Um, and you have to look for specific research projects that match with the professor that you're looking for. So um, if you're looking for um, a professor that does research in say like nano, nanomaterials or whatnot, you need to find that professor, contact that professor, and then see if that professor has time. Um, but I don't think you can get funding directly through the professor. You'd have to get funding as a research student, um, oh, um, as say as a research student um, or through some of the other scholarship opportunities that we talked about. Um, internship programs, there is for in engineering students. Um, yes, we do have um, an internship program, um, especially if you decide to intern in within Shimano Prefecture and then get a job within Shimano Prefecture afterward. Um, specifically for engineering students, I'm not, um, we do have factories here, like um, there's a factory based um, in Ismail that makes car parts. And there's another factory uh, further down in Shimano uh, in a city called Oda that also makes car parts as well. So, um, it depends on what type of activities and engineering that you'd like to do. So um, no undergraduate course in English. So none of our undergraduate courses are purely in English. The only one that we have closest to that is our English biling bilingual course, which is what um, I spoke about earlier, where you need a little bit of Japanese and then English. And then over a period of four years, um, you learn, um, you learn Japanese, enough Japanese to be able to graduate and write your thesis in Japanese. Um, and that's, would be, you get a Bachelor of Science in Engineering for that course. Are there any specific websites in Japan which professors upload on research topics for, um, for PhD programs? Yes, um, a lot of these websites um, I can send it to you later if you're interested, um, if you send me an email. Um, they, many times, um, at least at Shimani University, 
our research topics can be in Japanese, mostly written in Japanese. So you'd have to sort of Google translate your way through how to figure out which uh, professor you'd like to contact, but there's definitely ways to contact professors and see what type of research they're doing. Are all courses in Japanese only? Um, I think we went over this. Uh, where, yeah. uh, is it okay on time? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, you can answer that. Uh, we have time for that. Okay. Um, so the Graduate School of Natural Science and Technology um, is in English, very popular course, especially among our Bangladesh students. Um, and then again, with the bilingual English, bilingual English language course. Um, can you resend the university course link? Um, I will post the, uh, in the chats, the university course links um, after my presentation is finished. Um, is N5 enough to gain admission? I would say um, it depends on what admission. If it, you're, you want to get into undergraduate only and you do not want to do the bilingual program, you want to do everything in Japanese, then N5 is not enough. You would really need, um, you would really need to have at least N3, if not N2. Um, are there any Sri Lankan students? Yes, we had our uh, first, not our first, but the first Sri Lankan student that I met. I haven't been here that long, but we do have one Sri Lankan student right now studying at Sumani University. Um, about contacting for internship program possibilities, um, I'll leave my email so uh, then you can contact me and then I'll have the professor in charge of that contact you. Um, how to choose supervisor for research. Again, a lot of these things um, you're going to need to research yourself. Um, how uh, you need to research what your super, what your potential supervisor um, is doing and see if it aligns with the type of research you would like to do. So that's one thing. And then number two is to see if that person, that researcher um, or professor or um, supervisor has time to take on another student. Um, I think uh, that covers most of the questions, uh, the general idea of questions we have. Um, I would also like to add one very good point that Shimane University covered in the English Japanese bilingual education, that they covered the flow of Japanese learning for students in the undergraduate programs where Japanese is na either not a prerequisite or only very basic prerequisite. So this is generally the system in most of the universities where you study in Japanese, but the prerequisite is mostly English or very basic Japanese. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I again, thank you very much. Uh, again, thank you very much for uh, your uh, wonderful presentation, Miss Catherine. And let's move on uh, further to the next session. Um, so our next session is by Kyushu University. Kyushu University is again a Japanese national university located in Fukuoka in the island of Kyushu. It has been consistently featuring among the top four universities in Japan. Kyudai is considered as one of the most prestigious research-oriented universities in Japan and is a member of Alliance of Asian Liberal Arts Universities. So from Kyushu Universities, I will be joined by Dr. Kenan James, uh, who is Associate Professor at Kyushu University, and Dr. Mika Tamura, uh, who is also an Associate Professor at Kyushu University. And uh, again, I would like to invite Dr. Kenan James uh, to please take over the proceedings. We can't uh, hear you currently, Doctor. Oh, okay, sorry about that. Thank uh, you. Okay, so Mr. Swapnell, thank you very much for your introduction. <clears throat> okay, so um, let me just uh, check this. And then I'm ready to go. Okay, great. So. 
Uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is uh, James Cannon, um, and I'm an Associate Professor in Engineering at Kyushu University. Uh, this is a, a view of the campus of Kyushu University. It is uh, the, the newest campus in Japan, um, only completed last year. Um, and it's also the biggest campus in Japan. Uh, this includes a lot of trees, but nevertheless, it is the biggest campus. Uh, you can see in the distance here, this is Fukuoka City. So we are located a little bit just outside the city. So you get a nice mix of uh, the countryside and of uh, access to a city of, of more than a million people. Um, so that, that's a, a, a bird's eye view, but Kyushu University has been around for a long time. Um, it was established in 1911. So that's more than a hundred years ago. And this is what it used to look like a long, that, a, a long time ago. Um, you may notice somebody in this picture who's quite famous. Can anyone see? It's actually uh, this, this uh, professor here, Professor Einstein. So he actually visited the university in 1921, I think it was. Oh no, in 1920. Um, so it was just shortly after he got the Nobel Prize. And he, uh, he visited many universities, not just Kyushu, but then he, he came and, and visited Kyushu on the way through his travels through Japan. So there is this very long history uh, that, that Kyushu University has. Now, if I had to summarize Kyushu University in five points, um, then I guess I would say it's, uh, it has, it's obviously, I've already mentioned that it's been founded more than a hundred years ago. It's uh, actually Japan's fourth oldest university. So it's, uh, it's, it's one of the original, what were imperial universities. Um, it's one of the premier national seven universities. Um, and so it, they, they, these tend to be the former imperial colleges of Japan. Um, and they kind of remain the cream of the crop in terms of research and education. Um, it's a large scale comprehensive university. So um, I'm going to be talking a lot about engineering and agriculture today, but we have 11 undergraduate schools and 18 graduate schools across a very wide range of academic fields. So um, this provides a lot of opportunities for interdisciplinary research and also education and learning opportunities. Um, it's ranked within the world's top 0.5%. Uh, so it's, it's a good university and one thing that I think is very interesting um, is that our student to faculty ratio is uh, very low. Um, now, um, that's not so uncommon for Japanese universities, so I'm guessing that some of the other universities presenting today also have relatively low student faculty ratio. But I think this is particularly the case at Kyushu University, and definitely if, you know, in comparison to the US or Australia, where you might have, you know, a thousand students in the, some of these introductory courses, um, you get much more time with the, with the professor. And so um, I feel that that is then better overall for education. So as, a, as, as one of Japan, uh, Japan's leading universities, we are also engaged in, in you know, of course, world level research. And I've picked out a couple of institutes here where I think Kyushu University particularly excels. Um, we have the uh, in, International Institute for Carbon and Neutral Energy Research, or ISNA, um, which is focused on um, a lot to do with hydrogen technology and carbon capture and these sorts of things. Um, I think that's actually, um, and, and then we have the uh, next FC, which is also fuel cell technology. So you'll see a theme developing here in that um, hydrogen technology is something that is particularly strong at Kyushu University. Um, there is OPERA, again, for organic photonics, and then the Research Institute of Applied Mechanics, RIAM, uh, which uh, invented this, uh, what, they, what is called wind lens technology for uh, improving the efficiency of uh, wind, of, of, of wind uh, power generation devices. So um, there, there are, of course, many more, but these are ones that I, I've picked out. Um, if I had to find one prominent alumni, um, I might uh, uh, choose uh, Mr. Koichi Wakata. Um, so he, he studied at Kyushu, he graduated from Kyushu University, and he's currently a visiting professor at Kyushu University. Um, he's a veteran of four NASA space shuttle missions, um, and he was actually the first Asian International Space Station commander. Um, and uh, just as, a, as an anecdote, really, but 
the, the student doing research with me um, until, until this year, actually. Um, he met him last year. Um, so it, it's not like if you go to Kyushu University, you'll definitely meet him, but um, there, are, there is still this connection with the university, I guess, is, is the point that I want to make. Um, so where is Fukuoka? So Fukuoka is on Kyushu Island, uh, just here. Um, and it's often called the gateway to Asia. And this is because um, it's, it's you know, well situated quite close to a lot of other Asian countries. Um, so it's actually closer to the capital of Korea than it is to the capital of Japan. So it's, it's, it's uh, well situated here. It's, it's the largest city um, in Q on Kyushu Island. Um, and it's regularly ranked um, every year as one of the world's most livable cities. So I already showed you this bird's eye view. Um, so we're, we're based just slightly outside the city, um, but with a very convenient way to access the city. So there, there, it's a city of, as I say, more than a million people, but it's very easy to get out into the countryside. Um, and so, and then, you know, the, the beach is quite close by. So it's, it's a very nice, uh, it has a very nice balance, I think is, is a good word. Um, there are a lot of um, festivals and cultural events that, that tend to happen, not this year for obvious reasons, but uh, usually um, if the situation calms down a bit, these should resume as well. Um, another interesting point I think about Kyushu is that the living expenses are relatively low. Um, so um, you'll see the, the average uh, monthly expenses, um, excluding academic fees, are about uh, $600, more or less. Um, and this is um, cheaper than, say, say uh, Tokyo. Um, I, I lived in Tokyo for five years, so I can um, definitely relate to this. It, it is definitely much cheaper to live here. So if that's, a, if that's particularly important to you, then maybe that's a factor in Kyushu's favor. Um, now, what I want to talk about today is the International Undergraduate Programme in English. So um, Kyushu University, like, like many universities in Japan, um, has been pushing internationalization, and, and this was set up eight years ago as, as part of that. Um, and so we try and we run programs that are entirely in English, okay? Um, you can study Japanese, there's a, definitely that's an option, um, but you don't need it to graduate. At least um, th there's a very basic course at the beginning just for daily life, but, but after that you don't need it to graduate. Um, so there are uh, five international undergraduate programs in this IUP program, um, four in engineering and one in bioresource and uh, bioenvironment. Um, and we currently have about 100 or slightly more actually than 100 students um, in IUP. Uh, this is a class and it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to tell, uh, obviously just from the faces, but, but we have students from all over the world, primarily Asia, um, but then also from, um, I think this year we had um, from the Middle East, from the US and from, um, from many other parts of the world as well. Um, so if you were to say, okay, I, I want to join Kyushu University, what would my education look like? It would look like something like this. So the first year is you would be engaged in uh, what we call uh, Kikan education or general education. Um, and this is, the, the whole idea of this is that, you know, if you want to become CEO of a company, um, you can't just be very good at your subject. You can't just be very good at, at um, mechanical engineering or um, mathematics or something. Um, you need to have a general appreciation of, of the problems in society and, and gaining other soft skills. And so that, that's really what Kikang education is aimed toward. So you would study things like philosophy, you know, as well as um, economics and law, and also including uh, here some Japanese language as well, as well as some basic science core um, um, subjects that, that, that you will need later in your studies. During the second and third year, and partially the fourth year as well, um, you would then go into your specialized education. So that would be more specialized in particularly in the area that, that you're focused in. And then the fourth year, again, um, is, is 
very different to what you might know from um, maybe more from Western universities in that you are then as typically assigned to a laboratory. Um, I, I say assigned, but you do have some choice in it. Um, so, so there is some free choice, um, but uh, you'll, you will join a laboratory and hopefully that will be the one of your choice or, or one that you're particularly interested in, in doing research in an area that you're interested in. Um, and so you will then having taken classes, you're then given a little bit more freedom to uh, within within the structured guidance from the professor to learn a little bit more of independence, a little bit more about how you ask questions, how you frame research problems and, and things like that. So then that pre prepares you very well, of course, then for either masters um, or eventually PhD, um, if, if that's if that's where you intend to go. Um, so I already mentioned there are five uh, IUP uh, programs, and uh, one is bioresource and bioenvironment. So if you were to, to study bioresource or bio and bioenvironment, you would be learning, say, uh, perhaps about forestry, about animal resources, um, applied biosciences, and so on. In engineering, we have four different programs, um, applied chemistry, civil engineering, mechanical and aerospace, and electrical and computer science. Now, in applied chemistry, um, the, the, there are, of course, this, this covers various areas from organic to inorganic chemistry, as well as polymer chem chemistry and so on. Um, a lot of the hydrogen technology um, is related to chemistry, perhaps for obvious reasons, so there's a lot there are several laboratories focused on uh, fuel cell technology and, and related, um, related technology as well. Um, in civil engineering, there are, um, of course, earthquake engineering and things like this. Um, actually, just a, as, a, as a side note, Fukuoka is one of the most stable parts of Japan for, a, for uh, earthquakes. So, uh, but there is still this expertise. So. Um, so there's earthquake engineering, coastal and ocean in engineering, and uh, so on. Uh, electrical engineering, computer science. Um, Japan is, is in general well known for robotics. So um, if you are interested in that area, then you need to know both the electrical engineering side and the computer science side. And so I think that that is uh, one opportunity if you're interested in that area. You can also choose to, to focus more in one area or the other. And then finally, uh, mechanical and aerospace engineering, which is, is where I am uh, based. Um, and anything from thermal engineering, which is, which is actually my subject, uh, to you know, strength and materials. Again, hydrogen utilization. So hydrogen technology also uh, a, a very important part of this. Aerospace engineering as well. So, if you think, okay, that sounds interesting, I, I want to apply, how do I do that? Well, um, you would apply online. Um, the uh, application is open between the uh, 6th and 21st of January. So you need to submit all of your application. So there's an initial online application, but then you also need to send your documents by mail. So that would, they would need to reach us before the 21st of January. So um, that's a little, little over a month from now um, and when you when you send your documents keep a, a copy because um, of the, the the global pandemic at the moment is making things a little unpredictable um, if they were not to arrive then you would need to submit um, things by email so you uh, would, would need to keep a copy um, th there's a, a very quick list of the the required documents here so you need your transcript uh, you would need um, reports from standardized tests. Um, that if you go to the Kyushu, if you search for, for Kyushu University, um, there will be more information there. Um, or I can share a link as well later on. Um, and then tuition and enrollment fees is, again, fairly standard, I think, for uh, national universities in Japan. I guess, um, I forget now, but I guess it's the same as Kyoto, basically. Um, so there is a, a the, the annual tuition fee is uh, for the first year it's half price, so that's about two and a half thousand dollars, 
Um, and then after that, you can apply for a, a further reduction in subsequent years to, to half price again. Um, there are various scholarships available. Um, I, I think we've already heard a little bit about these and it's basically the same. Um, so in terms of MEX scholarship and, and so on. Um, there is a Kyushu University scholarship as well, um, which, uh, and, and these all really depend on your academic record. Um, and after you, you apply, you'll be, you'll be informed separately about your eligibility. Uh, the MEX scholarship is um, still being confirmed, um, but ho hopefully that should be available as well. Okay. Uh, so I see I've been talking for a while, so I'm just going to stop there. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you. For, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Kenan James, for such a wonderful presentation and uh, giving all the insights into the education process as well as various English programs, especially in the undergraduate portion where students have the maximum amount of doubt. And uh, I would also like to thank Ms. Tamura for uh, constantly answering all the queries by the students and uh, making our job a lot easier. So uh, now that uh, we have some time for uh, the Q&A session, uh, so would you like to pick up some questions from the Q&A portal? Uh, before answering the question, I'd like to make one uh, collection. Uh, so it's about uh, mixed scholarship. Uh, our university, uh, is uh, confirmed uh, as a recipient of like a mix uh, scholarship. So um, when the students apply for our university IUP program, they're like uh, also applying for uh, mix scholarship. And based on the like result, uh, we select the candidate. So uh, it's an easy process. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, uh, there was one question about uh, essays uh, to apply yes. for Kyush University. So uh, when the applicants ap apply for IUP e programs, um, in the application uh, document, uh, there is an, two types of essays. One is about why uh, you selected Kyush University and not other universities. And the other one is why you want to study uh, in the specific course, such as applied chemistry, civil engineering, and mechanical and aerospace. So they're like, they need to like their passions and also like the, the basic knowledge uh, about their course. Then, yeah, these essays are very important uh, in the first screening. Thank you very much. Next is, I think, uh, the next question. Is there a master's in engineering management? Engineering management. Hmm. I think there are some uh, changes in the ways uh, certain courses and programs uh, have names in other countries. So hmm. maybe the same kind of education may be having different names in Japan. Hmm. So. Uh, so in the university masters, uh, there is a MBA course uh, but then it's not necessary uh, we are like engineering management course and in the engineering uh, department we don't, we don't have management course so uh, we probably don't have like like a specifically engineering management course in our university but I think you can do the research about engineering management after you enter uh, the master maybe uh, MBA course or um, Would you like to pick up any, uh, some few questions as well? Um, how do you apply for post-doctoral program? You mean like a doctor, look, doctor program? Uh, post-doctoral, I guess is um, like as, uh, yes. Uh, okay. James, do you want to talk about it? Uh, as a, uh, applying for, to be a postdoc. Mm -hmm. um, so typically, um, I applied to be a postdoc when I came to Japan, and um, I applied to the professor directly. And then after that, we sorted out um, funding and things like that. That is quite helpful. Thank you. Also, um, there is one question. 
if I can pick up. Yeah. Uh, there's one question. Uh, may I know the joint research opportunities available with Indian researchers? So is something like that available at Kyushu University? Uh, yes. Um, again, it, it, joint research usually depends on the relation between individual researchers. So <clears throat> I, I was working with an Indian researcher at Kyushu University and he had connections to India. <clears throat> And, and therefore, um, that, that there was um, actually some there was some exchange of, of researchers between India and, and Japan and Kyushu University. Um, <clears throat> so it really depends on on the individual um, on, on the individual researchers. Um, and of course, it's not just Kyushu University. This will be the same for for every university. Thank you very much. Uh, okay, so there is one question about the scholarship. So if it is about undergraduate uh, IUP program, uh, based on the result of the exam, uh, we select the uh, candidates uh, of each scholarship. There are quite uh, a few questions, so. Okay, so a deadline for PhD program, uh, each uh, like, uh, graduate school have different timelines. So please check the website uh, of, uh, of your interest uh, program. Then uh, if you uh, click on the admission uh, page and um, uh, there is a like a details in it. Um, there's one question. Uh, is Japanese language proficiency certificate required to apply for master's degree? Um, uh, no, no, uh, we have like uh, international graduate programs in like every uh, graduate schools and uh, Japanese language uh, process uh, level uh, skill is not required when uh, they apply for international programs. All the courses are taught in English. Yeah, for, for engineering, at least my experience is only in engineering, so I can only say for engineering, but in my experience, um, I teach graduate level courses and um, I, I do it either in English or Japanese, depending on um, what what the student, who the students are. So um, it's flexible like that. Any other question you would like to pick up? Uh, okay, so uh, one comment, like I want to do admission this year. What should I do? Uh, I just share uh, the uh, website for the uh, admission to international undergraduate program. So, uh, well, uh, in January, uh, our first screening will start. And if you're interested in undergraduate program, please uh, look at the details of application information and prepare uh, the necessary uh, documents. Especially uh, exam result, it is required like SAT or EJU or if you are studying in like a, a, like a, a international school, then you can submit the result of um, IB or A level. There's one question about entrance exams <clears throat> for IUP. How will the entrance exam be held? Uh, so. Uh, First screening uh, will be based on the submitted documents. Uh, then secondary screening, uh, we will conduct the interview. Uh, every year we visit like uh, more than 10 cities in the world, but this because of the current situations, uh, uh, the most possibly the exam will be held uh, like uh, on the internet um, uh, from their home. We will connect. Uh, Yeah, the, the student who has PR, I guess that's permanent residency, is a student who has permanent residency eligible to apply to your university? Uh, I th I think I'm sorry, I didn't get the first part. Yeah, yeah. Does, a, does a student who has permanent residency for education, is, is he or she uh, eligible to apply to your university? Uh, 
Okay, so if you have uh, only Japanese passport, um, yeah, uh, when you apply for international undergraduate program, uh, at the School of Engineering, uh, we currently uh, only uh, accept um, for, as a student with foreign passport or uh, double passports. Mm -hmm. But then uh, if you apply for uh, bioresource and bioenvironment program, they also, um, they're accepting Japanese students as well. So um, you can apply. Yeah, so you're, the that. Permanent residency doesn't have any. Uh, yeah, permanent residency, uh, 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 it's not, uh, not the matter of problem, but then, uh, but education must be uh, like, um, uh, must be uh, done in a foreign country and, uh, for more than 12 years. Okay. There is one, uh, a, diff a little different question than others. Uh, so one is I'm currently in Japan. What scholarship I am eligible for if I want to enroll in PhD? Something I asked. So for people who are already in Japan, uh, what are the options for them? Uh, okay, so um, after uh, you enter uh, our university, there are a lot of scholarship opportunities uh, which are offered by private uh, associations. So in the beginning, like our university is not offering us uh, like a specific scholarship from our university, but uh, there are a lot of opportunities after uh, you enter university? I think J JSPS scholarship might be. Mm, uh, yeah, JSPS uh, is, I think, one uh, good so option. It's, it's very competitive. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is one option. I guess, uh, so, and most of the questions uh, in these uh, portal can be answered by the, visiting the website and the links uh, where they can get the required information. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have any further questions, uh, we can proceed with the webinar. Okay, uh, so again, thank you very much, Dr. James Cannon and Dr. Tam uh, Tamura for your uh, help and uh, for answering on the, all the questions. Uh, now, uh, I will, uh, we have the final presentation from uh, all the presenters, so we'll conclude the se today's session. So thank you very much for sticking with us till the end. And today we had three presentations uh, from different universities and uh, uh, the overview by uh, Focal Ed and our uh, introduction by uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Okay, uh, so they gave a very uh, uh, they gave a very comprehensive insight into the education system and admission procedure, along with the campus life, beautiful landscape of Japan, and career opportunities. We will have many more sessions with different programs, so please stay tuned and keep visiting the website of U Tokyo India office for the upcoming sessions. Uh, thank you and take care. <laughs>